Welcome to another GNU Cash Quick Start Tutorial. I'm Laura from the BusyBeePost.com and I'm here to show newbies how to get the most out of free GNU Cash accounting software for their small business bookkeeping needs. If you like my tutorials and find them helpful, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode and it encourages me to keep producing videos if I know they're helping. A thumbs up is icing on the cake. If you have any comments, please feel free to leave them in the comments section. And if you need some guidance, check in my description on where to begin. With GNU Cash's Integrated Accounts Receivable System, you can create a basic invoice quickly and easily that can be used as a sales receipt for purchases paid in full. Or you can create accounts receivable invoices for customers you sell to on credit. The difference is to create Accounts receivable invoices in GNU Cash for customers you sell to on credit is much more detailed. In this GNU Cash Quick Start tutorial, I will walk you through the anatomy of a very basic invoice focusing only on the simple features needed to produce a customer sales receipt for transactions paid in full at time of purchase. Let's begin. We will start by entering your company information in the system that you want to appear on the invoices you create in GNU Cash. Begin by selecting File and when the menu opens, select Properties. Here on the Book Options screen, select the Business tab. The information you enter here is pretty much self-explanatory. Fill in any company information you want to display on the invoice. Some companies prefer to use a different starting number for their invoices other than GNU Cash's invoice default starting number which will start at the number 1. If you want to change the starting number we can do so here while in the book options window by selecting apply so that the changes you just made will be saved and apply will keep the book options window open so we can make some more changes here. To change the invoice starting number select the counters tab and scroll down to the invoice row and enter the number before the number you want the first invoice number to start at. For example, right now the default is 0, meaning the first invoice created will start with the number 1. If I want the invoices to start at 101, I would enter 100, since 100 is the number before 101. When finished, select OK to save the changes and close the book option screen. Here is an example of the company information as displayed on the invoice. Next we need to set up the customer's profile for each customer we want to create an invoice for. Begin by selecting business, then customer, then new customer. On the new customer screen, the customer number is the number by which you want to refer to this customer. You can leave it blank and the system will generate a number for you in numerical order starting with the number one. Next, into the company name. This is a required field. If left blank, the system will display an error message. Under the billing address, the billing name field is optional. You can enter an additional name here or you can simply leave it blank if you choose to do so. The customer's address field is a required field. The funny thing here is it doesn't matter if you enter a partial address or a full address. As long as you enter an address in at least one of the lines in the address field text box. Below you can enter the customer's phone, fax, and email. And any additional information or comments you would like to include about the customer you can enter in the notes field. All these fields are optional. The data you enter here is for your eyes only. Next, select the shipping address tab. Here you can enter shipping address information for your reference only. If you want the customer's shipping address to appear on the invoices, you will have to enter it under the customer's billing address. Any data you enter here in the billing address field text boxes will appear on the invoice. When finished, click on the OK tab to save the changes and close out. Here is an example of the customer's information as displayed on the invoice. Once you have the customer's data in the system, now you can create as many invoices as you like for that customer. We will start with the first invoice by selecting Business and when the menu opens, select Customer then New Invoice. Here on the New Invoice dialog box, Invoice Type should be selected by default if not selected. The Invoice ID number 
is optional. This is your internal number for this invoice. You can leave it blank and an invoice number will be generated automatically for you starting with the number 1. Unless you change the invoice starting number on the book option screen under counters and in that case it will start with the invoice number you entered. Date open by default is the present date. This is the date used as the date you are entering the invoice in the system. This is not the date that will appear on the invoice. If you need to change the date for any reason, you can by clicking on the drop down arrow to open up the calendar you can use to change the date. Under billing information into the customer's name, start by typing the first few letters of the company name or individual's name you entered in the company name field text box when you created the customer's profile and GNU Cash will try to auto complete it for you by displaying a list of possible matches. Simply select the customer's name you are searching for by clicking on it and it will be automatically entered in the text box. In most cases entering the first few letters of the customer's name is all that is needed here. If not you can click on the select tab to open the GNU Cash Find tool you can use to search for and select the customer. By default, the notes field will only display on the invoice if you enable that option. For example, I will enter a message I want displayed on the invoice, an advertisement about an upcoming sale. Next, I will select OK to save the changes. Now on the edit invoice screen that opens, you can see the invoice ID number and here you have the opened invoice date. And in the note field, any notes you entered will appear here. Here I see the note I entered. I can also edit this note here if I change my mind. I could have also waited until I got on this screen and entered a note. This message is for this particular invoice and customer only. Below is where you can enter an itemized list of goods and or services you sold to the customer. You will notice that the layout is similar to the way the account register works. In the date field you can enter the invoice date. By default, the present date is displayed. You can change it by clicking on the arrow to bring up the calendar. In the description field, you can enter a description of the item or service. I will enter rings I sold. Action is a user-defined field. This is an optional field. You can leave it blank or you can enter your cost information or select one of the three predefined options. I will select material. In the income column, Select the income account from the chart of accounts that applies to this sale. I will select sales. In the quantity field, enter the amount you sold. I will enter 200. In the unit price field, enter the cost for each one of the items. Mm, they cost $2.25 each. Click inside the subtotal text box to generate the total. Here is the total cost of this invoice. And here is an example of what the invoice looks like so far. You have the invoice number at the top and the invoice date and details below. But it's not official yet until we post it. Posting the invoice saves the invoice in the system. If you don't post it, you will lose it. To post the invoice, select Post on the toolbar. If you don't see the Post option, select the drop-down arrow to reveal the hidden options and then select Post. When the dialog box opens, Asking if you would like to save the changes, select yes. Now the post dialog box appears. Post date is the date you posted the invoice to your records. Due date is the date the payment is due. These are the dates that will appear at the top of the invoice. You can change any one of the dates if you need to. You can enter a description if you like and leave the post to account as accounts receivable. When finished, select OK. Here is an example of where the post and due dates appear. Now that you have your post and due dates, the invoice is official but not yet complete. The final step is to process the payment. To begin processing the payment, select Pay on the toolbar. And once again, if you don't see the Pay icon, click on the drop-down arrow and select Pay Invoice. When the Process Payment window opens, you will see all the necessary information has been filled in for you. Now all you need to do at this point is to verify the information is correct by quickly looking it over. Processing the payment records the transaction in the ledger. 
including the date of the payment and the amount of the payment. The most important thing you need to do here is to select the transfer account the money will be or has been deposited into. For example, a business checking account. Here I will click on the small arrow on the left hand side of the assets account to open up the sub accounts and select the checking account to transfer the payment of this invoice to. Once you select the transfer account, the system remembers the account you previously selected and it will default to that account each time you process new invoices. When finished, select OK. Here is an example of the part process payment adds to the completion of the invoice. Here is the transaction payment date and the payment details with a thank you. Now that we have a completed invoice, we can print the invoice by selecting the print option on the toolbar. Here you're given a preview of the completed invoice. And you'll notice a new date is added to the invoice. This is the print date, which will display the present date each time you print an invoice. So far, we created a basic invoice in GNU Cash that can be used as a customer sales receipt for products or services paid in full. And if you like, you can even change the title of the invoice. For instance, say for example, I sell products online and the customer purchased and paid for the products online. And now I want to include a sales receipt to ship with the product as proof of payment in full or it could be a packing slip. No matter what you want to refer to the invoice as, the title can be changed by selecting options on the toolbar. And when the window opens, select the general tab. Then scroll down to custom title and enter the new title. I will enter customer sales receipt. And now I will select apply to apply the changes but keep the window open. Since I would like to make another change here, if you remember, earlier in the tutorial, I entered a note in the invoice note field. And I talked about having a choice of keeping it hidden or displaying the note on the invoice. Here you can select the display tab and scroll down to invoice notes and select it to enable that option. Now I will select OK to finish up and close out. Here I have the example of the changes I made to this particular invoice. Customer sales receipt is displayed instead of invoice. And here is the note, or you can call it a message, I entered in the invoice note field. Now to print a hard copy of the invoice, select the print icon on the toolbar. Or we can save the invoice to a PDF file by selecting the Make PDF icon. Here I have an example of the PDF file. This concludes this tutorial. This tutorial was just a basic tutorial, sort of a bare bones of creating invoices in Canoe Cash. In the next tutorial, I will show you the different ways you can apply sales tax to the invoices you create in Canoe Cash.